International Neil Artis, an educator here, and today we end with the Brittany, and we are going to do some spooky set of the news. Uh, so I have already put the tips on, and we're doing this set on the tips. Like Brittany's news, actually, like I don't know why I prefer them. I think on that, like I've got mixed feelings, but I think I prefer them on the tips. So we have just put the tips, and we have done two news already, and these ones are going to be with the nice spooky designs, and the rest of them is going to be black with gems so after i have put the tips i'm just checking for any more shiny places like make sure there is no shiny places the tip don't need to be scratched fully like 100 uh, percent as long as it's mainly scratch uh, the product is still going to attach um, to the tip really well so i'm just checking for those shiny places and then remove the dust Okay, so just remove the dust, use the blue scrub to dehydrate it, like when we dehydrate, like make sure you have no touch the tips, because um, this obviously on blue scrub, uh, so you don't want your tip to crack, and then an extra nail prep, so just a drop, again just on the natural nails, like her nail beds are so short, like so tiny, <laughs> tiny, tiny wee ones. And then we are going to use the light rose gel. I actually getting to open a new pot. Uh, so light rose gel, and it's so nice and beautiful. Universal air bond. Once the nail prep is dry, so universe. I didn't want to record it. Like I suffer for the bad migraine size the weekend, and this is a third day. Uh, so I was like, no, I'm not going to record. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to try it. At least like, uh, yeah, I might just go maybe a bit quieter at some points, but we'll see how we get on. Okay, so I'm picking up a small scoop of the product and we are going to apply it nice and thin layer. Like make sure you touch it everywhere. So with this thin layer, like I'm touching everywhere. And then I can put a drop more next nail. And because you've got such a slitter product, you can go very close to the cuticles, like almost touching it, uh, but without of touching it, obviously. And you can go very close to the sides. And you can really well massage the product. Uh, they, they're actually quite long. Um, set of the nails for such a short nail beds but Brittany is actually behaving with her nails and she <laughs> usually <laughs> this one goes in <clears throat> I think you had one accident was it a dog yeah. yeah was it a dog oh I remember all your hands even um been scratched so yeah, badly bad. <laughs> yeah so nice and thin next one in nice and thin okay after we have applied this layer change we can swap the hands and build up our apex so again i'm applying a nice and thin layer and then pick up the scoop of the product like a, that wasn't a nice pick so i'm just clearing it off and picking up again if you don't pick up nice scoop of the product, um, I suggest you do remove it and start again, like. So I'm working one side, other side. It's getting colder in here, so I've got a nice consistency to work with. Sometimes the gel is too, uh, like, too runny, uh, but this is just a nice consistency for me to work with. Change because it's not too runny, but also not too hard. Okay, nice and thin. Pick up the scoop. So 
So because of her short nail beds, uh, we need to have like an, quite a lot of product on the apex and the end needs to be as thin as possible change. Uh, otherwise the extension would be too heavy at the ends and they will lift or they will be more prone for coming off. Okay, so you can see the nail bed is so short, uh, like this nail even, even more. Okay, so the end needs to be nice and thin, so it's not too heavy for such as little nails. And then the apex, which make it more difficult for me because I want all my most of the product in the area of the natural nail. Like so it's kind of holding those extension. But that's make more difficult the blending around the cuticle area and she's got very gentle cuticles like okay clean my brush quickly change and another one Oh, come on, pick up nice. And then another one. So I'm just working the same one side, other side. And then cut it off. change and the last one on this hand nice and thin nice and thin and then work on this one I'm trying to don't put too much also at the, you can see it, I'm kind of applying it into the triangle shape a little bit. Uh, I'm trying to don't put too much at the sides because we are going to shape the coffin shape. So I don't want to file too much change. And then this one. If it does happen that you are maybe not happy about something. So see, I'm not happy maybe about this corner. What you could do is once it's cooked a little bit you can just add it on and I suggest for like every beginner I suggest you do it this way rather than trying to build the perfect nail um, because if you take a too long time with your gel it will just start running all over the cuticles like on the sides and it will just become messy so get rid of this ball and then work down the way I'm trying to don't go back, so I'm just picking up a little bit of gel and dragging it down. Then touch up the sides. And once I'm happy, cook it, so change. Now I need to cure this hand a little bit longer, so slide this hand on top of the other hand. That gives me a time just to clean everything and grab my gel polish as well. So I'm just cleaning my brush and also guys, like. Um, so when I'm cleaning my brush, I want to keep it into the nice shape and uh, there we are. I normally don't remove the full product of it, uh, just a little bit. Now I take the top hand, put it into the drawer, so I put it nice and clear and let's shape them. So remove the inhibition layer. And then 100 by 180 grit file, and we are going to shape them nice. One side, other side, into this V shape. Like we want nice coffin shape. Shorten the free edge.
blend around the cuticle area. And the best suggestion I can give you is like do a little bit, so like I will do this part. like a little bit then move on into the next nail because you will kind of do just the same stuff so your hand get used to you will know the size you will know the shape and this way you will uh, get more consistent uh, more equal like they will be more the same look at what angle I'm like kind of working with my file like as I say those nails are kind of <clears throat> difficult at the same time because of the short nail beds I need to place like lots of product in this part and the end needs to be nice and thin in order for them to last properly so sometimes the stuff like which we have learned it's not applying to every nails. Um, it's just not going to work for every client. Because uh, they all got different shape of the nails, different length of the nail beds. Okay, so first of all, those V shape, and you can see my filing lines. Shorten it a little bit. and get the sides nice blend around the cuticle area okay okay part number two of filing actually this one I need to taper it a bit more that's it so after I have done that I want to thin out the free edge So I'm just filling out the free edge. So it's nice and thin. Okay, then the next one. But when you're filling out the, edge, um, the free edge, like you need to remember the nail is rounded, so you're filing from one side to the middle to the other side. I'm also supporting the nail kind of from underneath whenever possible and uh, keep it more down the way so when you're going with the file you're not going to poke the nail like this this way you can kind of file a little bit faster not that I'm fast today <laughs> but yeah it have been a hard few days Okay, after this part is done, I'm going with the white buffer. So I'm still filing quite quick and I'm not going too close to the cuticle area. Because when I'm filing around the cuticles, I'm slowing down, especially with Brittany, like I need to be so careful. So you kind of know those clients were like, like, for some of them you can just file like crazy and nothing's happened and for all the different ones you have to be so gentle and careful. <clears throat> okay, the next step is I'm going to use those, um, those buffer, which is nice and precise. And I'm going to blend it around the cuticle area here all now. Okay, very gentle.
can also go with the file as well. I want all these parts to be nicely blended in. Okay, next nail. Very slowly, very gently. <laughs> So here is a sponge, so I'm not like um, filing um, at the cuticle and this that's why I like this buffer because there is a sponge which protect the cuticle. And the next one. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was talking about, so we don't catch the clients, Neil. <laughs> that's why it's good to keep it down the way. Okay, again, very careful around the cuticle area. Do you get those kind of clients which you need to be so careful so like with my file I can just go like <laughs> fly all the way through it and nothing is going to happen. Okay, so after I have completed the step I'm going to check the client view. And this way I can know how they are blended. As I say, I need to keep like, it's more difficult because I need to keep so much of the product at the nail bed. And then the cuticles are very gentle. Uh, so it's harder to blend those area in. So I'm just going to give a couple more scratches to this part of the nail. And then they will be ready for the color applications. Thank you. And those spooky design which we are going to create. Okay, so after this step, I'm just going to clean them and then using the cuticle nippers, we are going to trim them. So, baby wipes. There is not much to trim. There is more in here. And there is more in there. Okay, so that's me happy with this hand clean it with the blue scrap okay and then I can they are all nice and ready for the product application I'm going to quickly do it the same with the other hand and then we will do the design okay so let's paint them now they all nice and clean and ready for a painting so this one is just going to be a plain black so does this one plain black And I'm using a 183 black ink.
That's just great and tight. Oh, perfect. And same on this one. And in the meantime, I'm going to prepare the paint on French gel, which we'll use for the pigments application. And I've got the back of the form and here. Perfect change. So what I'm going to do it because we will just like have some cool pigment in there. I'm just dabbing it in the paint on French gel. more of an angle like I don't want it at everywhere and I don't want the same thickness so some places I want it stronger and some places I want it lighter okay because my other hand is cooking I'm going to quickly apply first crystals on the black meal or at least get them ready mm. soak of base gel Some old brush and a gem picker. Oops, oops. This is going to be actually so cool set. And one more. Perfect change. Okay, so I'll do the same in here. So in the middle, I've got larger gem. And then two smaller ones. This is actually so cool fun. Just clean that meal from underneath. If I feel like I've got too much, I'm just pressing on awesome change okay so another gem in here change And I think the color is so cool on them. Don't slide on me. Behave. So. Change. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then the small gem. I 
I'm peeling away my glove because otherwise change. I cannot see it properly, black on black. That's a bit more challenging. I should put the purple gloves on or a pink ones. Change. <laughs> okay. So now I need to protect my uh, black nail. So I'm going to apply the top coat. I don't want to um, rub the pigments yet on the other nails until we top coat this one. Like I don't want the pigments to get in there. So I'm just applying the top coat. Like decent amount around the crystals. Change. And then this one as well. And then we can move on into the design part, the fun part. You can slide this hand on top. Awesome. So, okay, clean the crystals and let's get the pigment mess. I don't want to drop them. So usually when I'm doing a client nails, like if I've got a second, like in between the curing or uh, something, that gives me a time to get the things ready. So I've got my pigments in here. And if I'm playing with the pigments, I'm always taking the wipe because it's a messy stuff. So the top coat is nicely cooking. And I can get the pigments and we are going to use definitely maybe even a blue. I'm not sure. Like definitely purple. Definitely the pink. No, because no. Uh, yes, and the blue. The touches, the smallest touch of the blue. So I take your right hand. Okay, so let's start the fun. And we are going to go like a lightest, which is pink, just on the top. And some other places. But more on the top. Then we're going to go purple. Oh, that looks already cool. I love the color of it. Now let's do pink and purples. I like it like this. See, sometimes you have to do something to, to know if you want to keep it the way it is or not. Now I take it, the brush, and we're going to clean it off. Take this... Um, white which I've gotten there and we are going to touch up in some places just to kind of give it those mystery look to it like almost foggy look change Ooh. <laughs> Okay, they don't look spooky yet. They look cute to that. So far, they look cute. Okay, so grab that in. Clean the excess of the pigment. This is so cool, like, perfect change. Okay, fun part two. Let's put the pigments away so I don't drop them. And then we are going to start painting the next detail. 
and this is going to be black so I'm using the foil design gel And go really nice around the cuticle area. Then fill this one up. So don't go too regular, like kind of we want to fill up some places. Here a little wave. And again. Okay, so the black parts are done. Same in here. Gosh, hope I don't shake the camera with my face. <laughs> okay, give a little wave. We could also do it painted like a black first, but I didn't want to because then I would have to buff it in order to rub the pigments. So I thought this is going to be quicker. Okay, and then straight away we are going to paint some tree in here, like a spooky tree. Okay, those little, little branches. Clean my brush off so I can go a bit thinner. We are also going to paint some graveyard with the wee crows on top And some, how you call it? Crows? Crows. Crows. Thanks. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so this one is ready. Change. <laughs> Let's do the stuff on this one now. Actually, I'm just going to swap for a slightly bigger brush <coughs> on the places I can. Just roll it out, so thank you. Britannia is always very nicely relaxed. But today we both suffer. She isn't relaxed, she got so black. I've got bad migraine, so we thought, like, oh, why? Let's jitter. It's really time consuming, said. Why not? <laughs> And we could always go for a stamping, but we decide oh, we will just freehand it. What a deal, we can just freehand it. Oh, the truth is I'm crap with stamping. <laughs> to be honest, it takes me usually faster to freehand it than stamp it. It is so funny, like once you're used to um, hand it can take longer to do the stamp by the time you take it out by the time you find the right one by the time you pick it you do paint the design <laughs> okay so here we are going to to paint maybe a wee bath or something Yeah, why not? It has to be tiny, so a little head. And the body. Okay, now I need to add those three triangles. Okay. And another triangle, triangle. So we've got a wee bat. Another one, maybe just slightly bigger. Uh. Okay, let's cook this one. Now we have no choice, we need to paint a tree there. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect change. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Is it cute? No, it's I think that's cool. a spooky design. It's, it's not cool. cute. It's spooky. Spooky, spooky. Okay, so we can actually paint some graveyard here as well. I think Britannia likes the graveyard. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, I think they're cool. Do you know any scary stories? No. <laughs> no. I'm not a big horror person. Like I'm a wimp for horror movies. I don't even like walking through graveyards, but like pictures of them are cool. If 
think the stuff I like it is those spooky trees. Yeah. Okay, clean my brush again. Sorry, I could feel your finger cracking. No, that's it does it all the time. It's fine. <laughs> I can pull them in and out of there. <laughs> <little pockets, so. laughs> it doesn't hurt at all. And here, what we want in here? Maybe a really spooky house, part of the house at least, yeah. It's actually turned it out good because I had some white in there, so it's not going to be just black and pink. That actually looks spooky. <laughs> it looks like my it has a oh, yeah. mouth and eyes. Oh my goodness, it does look spooky. Okay, and some beards. Okay, let's add more detail into it. So change your hands. And now we are going to use the white. So we can paint some moon. Okay, clean up my brush so it's very thin and do some stars. Just like a wee tiny ones. Change. Okay, so some moon in here as well. And the little stars. Yeah, 
and then that's our free hunting finish so we are just going to put the top coat change our hands and i can show you the final results and i hope guys you have really enjoyed watching this tutorial on the spoky nails so let's top coat it And that's Britain is one of the favorite colors. She loves green, she loves bright pink. Okay, so just protect it with the top coat. Perfect change. Top coat on this one. And we can take a cool thumbnail picture. I'm also sending you lots of glittery hacks. And I hope you have enjoyed watching this tutorial. And I'm glad I managed to record it. I was so scared. It's actually funny because I think it's the second time when I've got migraine when I'm doing your news. Yeah. Wasn't it last year as well when yeah, we were doing Halloween was, news? Yeah. No way. I need to check it. I, think it I need to time. check it because that was the spider ones. I'm going to check it because I remember like it. I mean, it's yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it could be. It could be on the spider ones for it. Next like, time we don't book Brittany for a Halloween news <laughs> because I'm getting my <laughs> So yeah, that's the finished results. Okay guys, now on a serious note, lots of glittery hacks and bye for now.